So, I just got to see Argyle, the brand new film from Matthew Vaughn, the same guy that made amazing spy movies like Kingsman, not so amazing movies like Kingsman 2, in my opinion at least, and uh, other spy movies like The Kingsman. So yeah, he, he's made a lot of spy movies named Kingsman. He also made Kick-Ass in an X-Man movie. He's a pretty good director. So what is Argyle? Argyle is this weird new spy movie starring Bryce Dallas Howard, a, you know, a person who's less famous for her acting, more famous for directing The Mandalorian, Half joke, she actually does direct it, but yeah, she's a great actress. And also Sam Rockwell, who's just amazing in everything he does. Henry Cavill's also here. You also have John Cena, for some reason, in a smaller role. And you have a weird spy movie. And what did I think? Well, going in, I had no expectations. I thought the trailer was kind of, you know, mediocre. I thought the trailer kind of made it look like a generic, as generic a spy movie as you can get. It looked very similar to that weird movie with Sandra Bullock and, and, uh, and Shannon Tatum that came out a couple years ago about this writer whose stories like sort of come true and then like a weird person that's sort of like the hero from the stories comes in and like saves her. It seemed very, very similar to that. And the trailer just did not make this movie interesting at all. And then the reviews came out and a lot of the reviews have been sort of mixed, but I've seen it and I'm pleasantly surprised. I actually quite enjoyed this one, I'm not gonna lie. Is it the greatest thing ever? No, I have a lot of problems with this. There's a lot of things in this movie that definitely hold it back and stop it from being one of Vaughn's best, but it's a movie that I had a lot of fun with and it's, you know, two and a half hour runtime. For some reason, it's that long, but I did have a good time with it, and overall, it's a solid movie. Now, first off, let me just get to the actual bones of this, all right? It's an action movie. It's a spy movie. How is the action? How is the spy stuff? Well, it's not as good as The Kingsman. I'll tell you that much. The spy stuff is cool at times, but it's nowhere near as intricate and as interesting and as unique gadget-wise and direction-wise as it is in Vaughn's previous work. One of the reasons is because this movie is PG-13, so a lot of these action scenes, which actually seem like they were filmed to be rated R, had to be pulled back when it comes to the violence and the grotesqueness of what's actually happening on screen because they needed it to fit into a PG-13 rating, which took a lot away from the movie. This movie needed to be rated R, and for some reason it's not, and that made this movie a lot worse. But the action still is fun at times. There are a couple scenes that are very unique, very interesting. There's one in the third act that I thought was hilarious and it was nicely, you know, shot and visually appeasing besides a little bit of CGI that looked kind of jarring. But the action is interesting. It's creative at times. Sometimes it's not very creative, which makes for some of the most boring action scenes in the movie. Uh, but overall, Sam Rockwell does a good job pulling his weight. I will say early in the movie, some of the best action scenes are some of the stuff with Henry Cavill and John Cena. There's a big sequence in the first act with those two that I thought was excellent and maybe the best part of the movie. And a part of me feels like it was Matthew Vaughn trying to signal like, hey, I want to make a James Bond movie with Henry Cavill playing Bond. And maybe that's what he was trying to do, but I loved the first act of this movie. It felt like a Mission Impossible film. It was great. I fucking loved it. But once the action actually wears off and a lot of the spy stuff wears off, how's the story? Is, the, is there a plot here that's interesting enough and twisty enough to really, you know, fill the shoes of this genre and be a, wor a movie that's worth seeing? And I will say for the most part, yes. I think the story here that's crafted is interesting enough and it's well done. The, the movie starts in a place that offers you a very basic, but yet, you know, hooking premise of this right who writes these stories that happen to be true and they they just have randomly become true she's like a fortune teller and now she's mixed up in this whole spy conspiracy thing that is a fine hook and the story obviously develops in the middle of the movie there's a twist that is you know kind of generic at first but then kind of gets crazier and i think the twist actually really works and makes the story into something more and more unique the issue with the twist is the movie gets to a point where it keeps throwing twists at you over and over and over and over to a point to where that original twist, that original gut punch of a twist that you got in about the, the middle of the second act of the film doesn't really hold as much weight anymore because literally every other scene there's a new reveal, a new twist, and the story kept getting more and more, I don't want to say convoluted, but more kind of twisted up in a bowl. Just like, it was so much that it just felt not earned. But in saying that, I still thought the characters were well written. I thought their motivations were good. I think the realization of who some of these characters were, learning who the bad guys are, who you can actually trust, I thought was done well enough. I think the villain of this movie, I won't spoil who it is, but I think he was very, very good and well done. And the actor who I love, I also won't spoil because I don't want to spoil who the villain is if you don't know already. But the actor, I love him and he was great in the film. 
Uh, overall, with all that stuff, I think the, the movie actually does a really good job. The movie's third act, though, drags a little bit too long. The third act is like 35 minutes, could have been cut down like 10, 15 minutes. There's a point, there's like two different points where I thought the movie was about to end, where I was like getting ready for it to be done, this third act is finished, and then it just kept going. It kept offering a new action sequence, a new set piece to get through. It kind of felt like if you're playing like a really long RPG game, like a very, very long RPG, and you're in that final little stretch of the game, and each time you think you're about to be done, you're gonna get to the final cutscene, they give you a new boss battle, they give you a new, like, level, a new, like, huge area to explore, and you're like, oh my god, this is great, but, like, for fuck's sake, get me to the ending already. That's kind of how this, the ending of this movie felt. It just felt like it didn't want to end. Matthew Vaughn didn't want to let us go. Uh, and because of that, the movie does drag a lot in its pacing. And a lot of the ideas kind of get lost because of how long and dragged on this movie ends up feeling. Which is a real shame because I do think Ma Matthew Vaughn had something really cool going on in this film. I will say the chemistry between Bryce Dallas Howard and Sam Rockwell is great. That's one another reason that the movie ends up working really well for me. I think they have really good scream chemistry and they carry a lot of the load of this movie. Especially, I mean, Sam Rockwell. Everything this man touches is gold, and he's so good here. He plays a typical Sam Rockwell character, but at the same time, you just absolutely love him. Uh, Sam Jackson's also in this movie. I, I, strangely, I have no fucking idea why. He doesn't do much, but he's here, and he's hilarious. Henry Cavill, I already talked about him, but yet again, he's great. I mean, he just brings this vibe to him, this... Uh, what's the word? Oh, Superman vibe. He's just a god. That's what he is. He's a physical specimen that was put on this earth to play Superman, and everybody knows that except for James Gunn, I guess. There's also a weird thing with a cat in this movie that I think, I think everything with the cat was just done, so they had something weird to market the movie on. I will say the marketing campaign in this movie was really bad after seeing it. The marketing campaign kind of pitched this weird, colorful, yet generic sort of action thriller, and I think the movie's a lot better than that, or it's it's le at least trying to do something different, similar to how The Kingsman was trying to do something different with a genre that has been done to death, and it tried offering a different take on that world, and I sort of feel like this is more in line with that style of movie, yet it was marketed as something completely different, and maybe that, like, upped people's expectations, or maybe I just liked it more than everybody else, I don't know, but I definitely think the marketing for this film sort of hurt it, I don't think they did a good job promoting it. But overall, main complaints is the fact that this wasn't rated R, if this movie was rated R, it would be a hundred times better. There are so many different sequences that you could just tell. I'm, go I'm going to assume when Vaughn was directing this film, it was intended to be R-rated, because there's so many different punches, so many different, you know, shots and, and, and gimmicks in the fights where you're like, that was supposed to be a lot more violent than it appeared on screen because of the way it's shot, and it's just not, and especially after seeing Kingsman, with all the grotesqueness and the violence and that, that really makes that movie memorable, at least the first one, I'm not a big fan of the second one, but the first one, extremely memorable, is because of that violence, and this film definitely, you feel that it was held back in the editing room, trying to squeeze it into a more presentable PG-13 rating, which I just, I don't get, I, I guess maybe they were trying to find a larger audience for it, but I think the larger audience would have been found that this was a very hardcore R-rated action film. I think the movie drags a little bit too long, but yet again, it's a really fun movie that I think I could recommend to just about anybody. I think anybody can go and probably have a good time with this movie. It's the type of movie you put on, like, a Friday night if you're bored, just want to watch some mindless action that does have a plot that is sort of interesting and you need to pay a little bit of attention to, to sort of follow along and, and, you know, well thought out and well written enough that it's not just kind of like a throwaway plot. Uh, it's got good performances, decent enough action. It's a solid movie. So I'll give Argyle a 3 out of 5. I really don't get all the this movie's getting. People are really shitting on it. I'm seeing people giving this thing like one out of five is just absolutely shitting. Like there, there are worse movies to watch than this. This is just a fine action movie. It's not Vaughn's best, but Matthew Vaughn is a great filmmaker and he's one of those filmmakers that just doesn't really put out trash because he knows what he's doing, especially in this genre. So that's it guys. Hope you guys like the video. Make sure to subscribe. If you like this video, turn on notifications. Click the video on your screen right now to see more of my stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.